Hi everyone, welcome to November. I know I'm a few days late on that, but hey, this is all of the stuff that is hopefully coming to the channel this month, or at least things you've got the opportunity to vote for. If you'd like to help everything keep happening, patreon.com forward slash slicker drips, you get to take part in stuff and see stuff early, but mainly help me make as much of it as possible. I'm going to interrupt a second because I keep forgetting to say this. There is a new option on the Patreon page for annual subscriptions. So it's always been a thing when I made the switch from uh, Kickstarter to Patreon that some people really like just the one-off thing that they could just come to Kickstarter and that was it for the year. And you know, Patreon is a recurring monthly thing. And so if you're one of those people <laughs> or you just like the idea of the just doing it a one-off and uh, then you, you're sorted for the whole year. Yes, annual subscriptions are available on the Patreon page and there is a discount as well uh, for going for a whole year in one great big go. There you go, back to the games. So what is gonna be coming up? Well, things that are filmed and will be out shortly, as soon as they're edited and ready, there is Lost Ruins of Arnak, one of the big Essen games from CGE, and Amerigo that won the vote for last month. And uh, so great big Steffenfeld game, beautiful one. That is coming very, very soon. And then new releases or new to me at least, are coming on the way. There is Rococo, the deluxe edition from uh, Matthias Kramer and Louis and Stefan Miles. This is, you know, the, the amazing, the great big ones over there on the sofa. You know, it was this. You remember this? Uh, brilliant uh, area control game about making dresses mainly, but there's, you know, area control between the halls and stuff, area majority rather than area control. But uh, yeah, you are trying to get the best assistance, make dresses with the expansion, make jewelry and stuff. The original playthrough was actually, I think, the very first two player video I ever did. Uh, so it's been deluxified now by Eagle Griffin, who make all of the Vita Lacerda deluxe games. Uh, so it's got the same treatment. Great big box, ENO tool artwork and graphic design. As beautiful as the original version was, it's got a whole new coat to it and it's got some extra mini expansions and stuff as well uh, and a solo mode that it didn't have before so i would uh, want to do a solo video to show that off especially since there's already a two-player video for the original game so rococo the deluxe edition uh, there is winter kingdom which is ah, that's here winter kingdom which is the sequel successor re-implementation of uh, kingdom builder which is an absolutely fantastic game from uh, Donald X. Vaccarino, the designer of Dominion. Uh, this was, I believe, the follow-up to Dominion. And uh, in my experience, anyway, it's always been much maligned, Kingdom Builder. It's a game where you have this map of all sorts of different terrains, and on your turn, you have a card. And with that card, you have to put some houses on that terrain, and then you have to build adjacent from that terrain. And so incredibly restricted in that sense, but it's all about you, you giving yourself options. There are different things that are going to score each game. There are going to be different abilities available. And Winter Kingdom shares a lot of that stuff. Rather than there being places on the map for you to go to and get these ability tiles to then use, you have ability cards. Everyone starts with one out that lets them use tunnels, a new thing that's on the boards. But everyone has a different set of ability cards that they can use money earned in a different way every game. It's based on a card that's drawn at the start. Everyone can play ability cards and upgrade them so that they can get more and more things down as they did with the abilities in the original Kingdom Builder. Uh, there is a twist that changed the rules of the game in kind of a radical way. The one that we played our first game with uh, meant that the boards were treated as separate and so you know, you couldn't go over the outline of the boards and still be treated as adjacent. And uh, yeah, it's it's similar in a lot of ways, but a lot of uh, extra little twists and new things and kind of kind of tweaked things like the ability cards rather than the different things on the map. But that kind of means it'll be a bit more expandable, maybe, or expandable without new player boards. Like it's got rather than the was it parallelograms in uh, Kingdom Builder, it's got the kind of uh, great big hexes. And so they don't have particular sites on them. Anyway, I'm going on too long about these games. It's like big, uh, <laughs> this, this is like the Essen list. Go on the Essen list if you want to see me talk about it. Uh, Winter Kingdom, I'm just excited. I've played those ones. Uh, there is uh, Under Falling Skies, I talked about in the Essen video. A solo only game, although you could play it uh, cooperatively, uh, where aliens are invading. It's Independence Day. And 
aliens are invading, they're coming down kind of like uh, space invaders, and we basically need to do uh, dice placement to stop them. There are all these different rooms that will provide energy, that will give us research to go up this track, which is the aim of the game, really. Do that before the aliens get you. And there are rooms that will blow up all of the aliens as long as they are on certain spaces, but the, the kind of trade-off is you want the good numbers to activate the rooms you know, at their utmost power. But if you put a six in it, you put a one die in each column for each of the ships, and there can be more ship than one ship in each column. But if I put a six in there because I want six energy, that's going to move any ships in that column down six spaces closer and closer to me. But sometimes, depending on, you know, getting them on the explosions and stuff, you want to do that. Uh, you know, tons of extra stuff in there, loads of different cities, loads of different tweaks to play with. There's campaign mode. Uh, I won't be playing with that. I've been given a special demo version of the game that's got all of that stuff, uh, you know, blurred out, censored. So uh, it won't spoil anything if you want to go through uh, the campaign yourself. But yeah, under Falling Skies, I was, you can you can see my uh, my Essen video for how excited I was uh, for that. Uh, we've got, I don't know why I've only put three games on here, and one of them is the old Rococo. It's because uh, big Rococo kept getting in the way of the camera, you could see it the whole time. Uh, we've got Paleo, which uh, yeah, I don't know that much about. I know that it is the new game from publisher Ham Hansim Gluck, which uh, have published the only one that springs to mind right now is, well, Russian Railroads. And uh, for, I was going to say the first class is the one that uh, springs to mind always. But yeah, always these beautifully interesting kind of, well, I'm thinking more of first class than Russian Railroads, but uh, modular games where the same kind of basic rules are there, but based on these different modules combined together, you know, the, the modules themselves are very different, but how they combine really makes a difference as well. Like first class, just with its, I never got any of its, were they just mini expansions for first class? I only had the, the base game, and I think that the, the murder mystery one in that never really worked with anything. I'm getting distracted again. Paleo, it's a cooperative game from them. So it's all, it's got all of the, hopefully yeah, lovely, interesting, thoughtful design uh, that uh, Hans and Gluck tends to go for, but in a cooperative game that I don't believe I've seen uh, from them before, and I love co-ops, so hopefully this is going to be a really neat, interesting game, and it's from designer Peter Rustemeyer. Realised it wasn't on the box. Yes, I got that right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, new, new designer to me, very much looking forward to it. It's got uh, some lovely, you know, Anytime you're making little structures out of cardboard, you you know it's got to be interesting. That's not true at all. <laughs> so I have mentioned in that I had those little structures. Uh, so that's Paleo. We've got Viscounts of the West Kingdom should be uh, coming very shortly. This is onto games that haven't quite arrived yet. And should I be putting them on the list? But if I don't put them on the list, are they going to be in December? Is it going to be too late by then? Viscounts of the West Kingdom, the third kind of chapter in this trilogy. That was in the Essen list as well, wasn't it? Oh, this is a really... I suppose that makes sense for November. This is really all of those games kind of uh, coming out. Uh, so, yeah, this is the third in that trilogy. I don't really know that much about it other than I absolutely loved Paladins, the kind of second one, and I really want to give Architects, the first one, a chance. I've only played Paladins solo, but it's got a, a beautiful solo mode that has made me really think that I've been missing out on all this stuff. But there is also a little kind of add-on that lets you play the three games as a great big trilogy, as a kind of campaign in a multiplayer game, I think, but also has ways of you playing all three games cooperatively. And yeah, that, that is just amazing. I love when it's when that has been done to say early on, when that got made uh, cooperative, the competitive game's all still there. You can always play it like that, but uh, collaborating in this uh, really, interesting decision space is uh, is a whole new great dimension for me at least it was it early on and i hope it would be for viscounts anyway and maybe if we get uh, if we get viscounts and that expansion maybe it's time for a great big uh, trilogy of videos going through them uh, cooperatively or in a campaign setting that's viscounts of the west kingdom kingdom rush that's actually not on the vote that's uh, that's going to be quite soon uh, i did a kickstarter playthrough for that it is a cooperative Polyomino lane game, <laughs> a cooperative Polyomino tower defense game where all of these hordes are on little movement trays, they're cards that are on movement trays that are coming towards you and we are the heroes trying to stop them getting to the gates of the kingdom and we'll be doing that through our very varied attacks, you know, there's an archer, there is a great big uh, melee guy with his great big hammer, there is uh, the human torch <laughs> is one of them, uh, but so, yeah, through their various abilities and the different towers that we can get out, we are trying to basically stop all these, but everything pretty much 
fires polyomino pieces. The more you upgrade them, the bigger the pieces will get. But yeah, we're basically playing cooperative Tetris <laughs> at the same time playing a tower defense game. It, uh, it worked together brilliantly in the prototype. And uh, yeah, the, I should have put this at the beginning, but there will be a playthrough coming that very, very soon. Uh, Smartphone Inc. Uh, is a game that was raved about. Was it last Essen? Or was it even the Essen before? Uh, I remember not being able to get a hold of it. It's, it's an Essen anyway. Uh, a, a business game. We are smartphone companies trying to make the most money. Trying to make the best smartphones, but really make the most money. Uh, I've just got my hands on a copy of that, along with an expansion that's got a special two-player board, rather than you know tightening up the normal board. It's got one specifically designed for it, so really looking forward to getting into that. Uh, we've got uh, Anno 1800, more stuff from that Essen list. Uh, it's a you know, adapted from the video game series that I've uh, always thought about playing but never gotten around to. Uh, it's, a, it's a great big, uh, well, not necessarily civilization game, but it kind of is, you know, tech trees and uh, city building and stuff, from what I understand. And uh, the, you know, the, the game was getting a little bit of buzz when I made that Essen list, and all I've kind of seen when I periodically check you know, Twitter and stuff. I don't check it as much as I probably should. But uh, yeah, it seems to be getting raved about more and more and more. I think uh, John Gets Games, I just saw, had uh, had played a tabletop simulator version of it and uh, absolutely raved about it. So can't wait uh, for that to arrive. Cubitos is uh, another one from the Essen list. Uh, it's a race game with a lot of dice that kind of Automobile style, the different colored dice will mean different things based on uh, the cards that have come out each time. Really, really excited about that. That's one that you know, I've pre-ordered that is delivering in November. I'll put it near the list because maybe it's coming, maybe it's not. Uh, Meeple Land is a new game from, uh, it's coming from Coil Spring in the UK, but I think it's Blue Orange. Uh, and that is, all I need to know is it's a game about theme parks. You know, maybe just owing to, well, it's probably love of theme parks, but also the game theme park. Uh, Steam Park, just say all of these things that rhyme in the end, uh, is, um, is a, a fantastic game. And uh, Coney Island is another one. Just really into it. There was, there was one, is it Unfair? Really wanted to play, but I heard it was uh, quite mean. But Meeple Land, I expect, will be a bit of a lighter game because uh, Blue Orange go for uh, more family-style games, but I'm in. Uh, and finally... Another one, it's on pre-order. I think originally it said mid-November. When I ordered it, it said something like three to eight days. It's not here though. Uh, Halitau, I'll put it on the list in case it comes. Uh, and if it uh, if it wins the vote and doesn't come, then it'll, I'll do the second most voted for thing. But you know, it's not about just who wins the vote. Uh, the second and third place and stuff uh, gives me a guide of which ones I should film, should I have the time. But the great big new game from uh, Uwe Rosenberg, the first, you know, expert level as uh, Lookout put on the games uh, since uh, Afis for Odin, I think, as far as I know. So the first in four years. Uh, there have been plenty of games from uh, Uwe since then, but none in his uh, in his big meaty Euro style. So really excited about Halita. You can see more about it in my uh, top 15 Essen list where I went on and on and on about a lot of these games uh, in uh, bigger detail. But there we go. That is, hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm always... Uh, coming up short uh, for actually getting these things filmed. It's just time, isn't it? The relentless march of time. You can't keep up with that, but I try my best. And depending on what you want to see, I'll try and get as many of these done as possible. So there we go. I hope you're excited about some of those. Are there things that I haven't mentioned that have come out that I should be looking into that you're excited about? Let me know. Anyway, I'll see you for some of these games. Bye, everyone. <laughs>